Hi, this is Nick here from OnlyFabs, and I just came back from judging ProQuest Sechtogenbos. Now, it was a blast. The atmosphere was absolutely phenomenal. All players were really clear in their communication, so they made it my job as a, as a judge much easier whenever something happened. They were all like, oh, uh, when they called the judge, and they were clear cut in their explanation of the mistakes that happened. So, all in all, um, excellent. Uh, but you're not here watching the video rambling about me uh, having a, a, a rules hard on. No. This is the meta breakdown. So, we got uh, Prism, a ton of them. We got Fizzerai, and then we have Chain over here. And uh, some people even played Bravo Star. Surprise, right? We had some one-offs, but uh, mostly we're interested in top eight conversion. That's always a metric of of uh, Dex raw power, right? Well, Bravo Stars, all the three that entered the tournament, so the ten percent that was in it, they were in it to win it, and they even made it all to the top four. Now these are local heroes, and uh, the six prison players that didn't even hit top eight, at least two of them normally do hit uh, higher. Uh, uh, slots in uh, in in tournament, but you know it's also a matchup variance thing because uh, prison players were facing mirrors all around. And now, especially that Katsu player, um, Didier, he hits top eight on a regular interval. Um, he plays a ton of events and he's an experienced player as well. So if you want to get a good Katsu list, probably try and uh, get a hold of uh, of him. Now, my first impression were that uh, Bravo Star of the show, when it hits the nuts, it is an absolute the nuts. Oh, maybe I just, yeah, here. So, uh, and not only does it uh, uh, attack nice, <laughs> it's capable of blocking. So, it's not just this Argo deck that pukes out his hand and calls bingo. Alweer een winnaar. Whenever he hits his hero power, no, it has a critical mass of disruptive cards like Oakenhold and Krypton Crush. And without needing a pommel, although I saw one Oakenhold into pommel, which obliterated a Briar, um, because he had uh, he already soaked a ton of damage to get a, a mount of uh, a channel mount active in play, um, and then after that, getting Oakenhold, uh, trying to soak it, or not even being able to block it fully, and uh, needing to soak it. And then even being pummeled was so disruptive that the uh, channel fell off, the hand was poof. So yes, this deck will win on raw power, so every now and then. And the Crown of Seeds is, that's a card, is a 2. No, it's a card and uh, it has a, a, a ton of raw power. Uh, it will stop one damage uh, every now and then, but what it mostly is doing is it's going through your deck, filtering in a a really high rate and every now and then with the tunic it gives you a five card hand which makes up for easier quartette with the hero power now um the story that i want to get across is that um you you absolutely need to be prepared for bravo and my first indication of 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 what i saw from bravo is that the options that the equipment bring for bravo star is it's just amazing just stalagmite ram shield of course the other uh, elemental uh, guardian has these options. It's just Cri Crippling Crush and Oakenhold. On top of that, free uh, hero power. And every now and then you just hammer for eight with uh, that... Um, what's it called? One of the pulses. So yeah, it's a high, high deck. Um, one player described it as a roller coaster. And it's, uh, it can get pretty intense. But um, is it too early to tell? No, the the deck has 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 a high high damage output with a low skill ceiling as compared to Chain, who needs to sequence a, a combat chain of of upwards of eight cards perfectly. Uh, additionally, I saw a Chain lose his top eight match uh, because he was sequencing incorrectly, and and it was something obvious where he gave go again to an attack that already had go again. So, first indications, be prepared for a Bravo Star. Be prepared for the fact that this deck can also block really well because of staunch response. Um, if you see top 8s without prisms, 
I be wary of the total event because you also need to hit your matchups on the day, right? So a lot of prison players were being uh, paired against each other. So um, is it advantageous or a, disf a disadvantage? Well, uh, in total, it made sure that uh, a ton of prisms didn't hit the top tables. Or they were on the top tables, but they didn't hit top eight. So um, final impressions. Flashing Blood is one of the best games to be a part of as a community because the, I don't know, but the Dutch community, love you guys. See you next time.